Good morning. Welcome to Truth for Today. This is Dai Qing Yuan, your host and teacher, pastor of Abilene Bible Church. Today we are continuing our study of the series on the church as the school of God. This is in a bigger series of the church, the fivefold essence of the church. It includes the church as the temple of God, the church as the family of God, and now the church as the school of God. We have reviewed the purpose of God in creation, and it seems that God is creating a worthy wife for His uh, eternal Son. And uh, this uh, um, wife or bride shall come from humanity. Uh, whom God created with the greatest gift of His image, of um, his, uh, the potential of sonship in His household. However, in order for the love of God to become real, to be accepted uh, in depth and in reality, He has to give us the free will. However, the free will can be used in the wrong way, and therefore it did. It, uh, from the uh, God allowed temptation, it came, fr uh, humans went into sin, and from sin came the, uh, the evil and the suffering. And God is using all of this to draw people back to God. And during this process, education uh, to let us know the truth, and let the truth make us free. And that is the big part of God's eternal plan. So, we see that God created Israel as a school of God, and Israel was a school of God. It, the Word of God was given to the chosen people of God, and they learned it, and they kept it, and passed it on faithfully to the church and today. And that, to that, we are really, really thankful. And however, as sinners, Israel could not obey the Word of God and totally, and therefore they uh, are corrupted and they lost their um, their their place as the channel of blessing to humanity. And God gave us one one Israelite, one seed, singular seed of uh, Abraham, who is Jesus Christ. And through him, uh, all blessings shall pass through to all nations. And now that's why we mostly people in the church who are Gentiles that we can. Uh, come to God. We can stand on equal ground worshiping God as part of the kingdom and the household of God on equal ground with the Jewish people. And that is another grace of God. So the church, again, is an expansion of the spiritual Israel, the believing Isra uh, Israelites. And therefore, we should carry on the good characteristics of uh, uh, the, the people of God in the Old Testament. And trying to be a school of God is part of that. And we know that the early church was a school of God. They uh, accepted the Old Testament. They uh, expanded it with the New Testament. They uh, taught the truth and they kept the Bible. They put together and they even formed the Trinitarian principles and the, uh, through the early um, uh, seven uh, universal church councils. And uh, the middle, uh, the medieval church was also a school of God under very difficult situation when the civilization collapsed and the church became the light in the dark age and they have actually gradually lightened up and made the medieval time actually getting better and better. Uh, but itself, the church itself gotten corrupted like Israel was and then uh, that's why there was a need of reformation. And that's, thus we are entering the modern church period. And there are are basically two periods. The early modern church started from the Reformation in the 16th century. And uh, uh, it, the early modern church stood up for truth. Uh, first of all, it returned to the original uh, Bible, to the uh, Bible in the original languages. We know that uh, the Old Testament was written in Hebrew and mostly in Hebrew and a few parts in Aramaic, which is a cousin language of Hebrews, kind of like German to English. Okay? It's of the same family. And uh, uh, only part of um, Daniel and uh, 
Nehemiah and Ezra, etc. Uh, uh, but mostly it was in Hebrew. That was the original language of the Bible. And you know that when you do translation, something get lost. And, uh, and therefore, uh, the, even though the early church, uh, because they were mostly Greeks, they inherited the Old Testament in Greek. So most of the early church read the uh, LXX, the, the Septuagint, the Greek translation of the Old Testament, because that was the, 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 the church's uh, natural language. However, uh, the translation of the uh, Old Testament in Greek was not done in a uniform uh, level. Uh, the Septuagint was not always translated well. Somewhere uh, it was good for the, for the Pentateuch, the Torah, it was translated very well, literally and fluently, and it was very well. However, uh, the other parts, it, the, the quality just kept decreasing. Uh, and for some books of the Old Testament, it, it didn't even get totally translated. <laughs> the translator could not understand it. Uh, they just, uh, for Job, they just translated part of it, and for those who didn't understand, they just left it away. <laughs> let it off. And for Jeremiah, it's more complicated. Maybe it was not even totally formed yet. Uh, and for Daniel, it, because it was controversial in prophecy, uh, in the timing of the Messiah, some people who already supported that uh, the, the, the Hasmoneans, uh, I mean the Hasmoneans were the, uh, the people who led the, the Maccabean revolt, and they, they were brave, conservative Jewish people, and they acquired the power somehow. God allowed them to acquire the power to rule over uh, Judea. And there are some certain, a lot of them, I think, the Jewish people, believe that they must be the Messiah. But, but somehow they, uh, they do not fit the profile. They were not uh, the children of, uh, of David, so they should not be the king. But they were. <laughs> but something didn't fit, right? And they were not the children um, of, the, of the family that's supposed to be the high priest. So they were priestly family, but not a high priestly family. And so they should not be the high priest, but they were. So something did not fit. Um, and again, the priest and the king should not from, come from the same tribe. So how can that do? The, the, the people have the difficulty understanding uh, it takes the New Testament revelation that the, the Messiah, who is a son of David, who, a Judahite, who will be the king of Israel, he also becomes the high priest from another order of Melchizedekian order. I mean, that takes the book of Hebrews for us to understand. In the New Testament, it's just very hard, difficult. Uh, you know, to, to understand. So people had their opinions already formed by the situations, and therefore there are some people who translated Daniel. Uh, to support their political opinions. They changed the number, the dates, so that the Maccabeans could be, or the Hasmoneans could be the Messiah. That's called the Old Greek Translation. <laughs> well, we, thankfully to the, the Jewish people who kept the, the Old Hebrew, and now we can know that the date doesn't fit that translation, and the best translation goes to the time of Jesus. Okay? And uh, again, uh, the church, uh, in the early church and the medieval church, the key issue really is uh, not on chronology. Uh, it is, and the key issue is on whether or not Jesus is the Messiah, uh, and uh, uh, whether or not he is the Son of God, whether, whether or not God is Trinitarian or Unitarian. And uh, on those issues, uh, actually, the Greek Bible does, does the job well. Okay, uh, is just have some deficiencies, and when the church matures, and in uh, you know in the uh, Greek Bible in translation, okay, they not only left out some of the Hebrew Bible, they also added in some writings by the Jewish people during the intertestamental period, and those books are called the apocrypha, which means the hidden books. And those books were never regarded by the Jewish people nor the church as holy books, as inspired books. Thus, they were, they're kind of like the Christian novels these days, you know. Today, there are a lot of people who write Christian novels. Are they biblical? Many of them are. You know, there is a series uh, about the, uh, the end time. <laughs> uh, it's very biblical uh, in theology as much as they know. 
okay? Uh, they, they're not inspired and not perfect, but they, they, they are interesting. They, they are um, worthy of reading. However, uh, you know, the Left Behind series, that's what I'm thinking about. Um, but are they scripture? Are they, uh, you know, for, are they beneficial? They could be. But are they supposed to be scripture? No. Okay. So that's what they are. The, the, the apocrypha, and there are a lot more things which are called the pseudepigrapha. Pseudo, you know, is false. Uh, 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 epigrapha, depigrapha, it means epigraphy is writing. So it's writing in the false name. <laughs> so those books are not only r written and was not recognized as scripture, but they were actually written with a fraud behind it. They are written in the name of some ancient famous people, like the book of Enoch, the book of uh, you know, Noah, the book of Adam, <laughs> and, and so on. There are Old Testament pseudepigrapha, and there are New Testament pseudepigrapha. And for those people who are starting with a fraud, I would say guard over it, right? Uh, it, it definitely cannot be the holy writing because God does not need to commit a fraud. He doesn't make mistakes. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, um, but however, are those books beneficial in some way? Like the book of Enoch, Enoch, the first Enoch. It is beneficial in some way. It reflects the idea of the uh, intertestamental period about how the Jewish people uh, understand the, the spiritual world. They believe there are this many levels of angels and their head angel's name and so on and so. And the church actually, especially the Catholic Church, they carried it over. Why? Well, because the early church, they carried over the, uh, the Greek Bible and also they carried over these apocrypha and uh, partially the pseudepigrapha. So the influence was carried on through, all the way through the Middle age, Ages. And uh, the, the, um, the, the wise and the really uh, studied, really uh, learned church fathers, uh, like uh, Jerome, the one who translated the Bible in, from the original languages, you know, Hebrew in Old Testament, Greek for New Testament, into Latin. Okay? Uh, Jerome, at first, he, did not, he refused to translate the Apocrypha. <laughs> but because those books were uh, still read in the church, in the popular level, and uh, some people liked it, some church fathers like uh, uh, Augustine, who did not read the original language, he can only speak Latin, neither Greek nor Hebrew, he urged the, the, the Jerome to, to translate that. Well, okay, so Jer Jerome translated those books, but he put those books as appendices. Okay? After the Bible, he says these are appendices, these are called Apocrypha. Uh, uh, he's meant those books as reference books, not as part of scripture. However, because the books were copied during the Middle Ages, is only the monks copied the books and they copied them together. And they're after that, and they copied them together. So gradually people lost this distinction. And uh, later, a lot of people in the church, a lot of the uh, canon laws in the Catholic Church were actually made based on the teaching in the Apocrypha, like baptizing for the dead, okay? uh, the idea of purgatory, they are all from the Apocrypha, from the book of Maccabees. <laughs> uh, are the Maccabees good books, good histor historical books? Yes, they are, especially 1st Maccabees. is very objective and it gives us a lot of data that is missing in any other historical books. So that's precious. It's worth reading. However, are, is that supposed to be scripture? No, because are there errors in it? Yes. Okay. For the Holy Scripture, there is no error. Inerrancy distinguishes the, the Bible from all other books. Okay, it does not have error. Other books, uh, it may have truth, it may have error. The Bible does not have error in the original language, in the original autograph, uh, autographed uh, uh, version. And uh, there may be errors in copying, but we can you know, correct it as, as much as we can uh, to, 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 go, uh, to go to the original as much as possible. So the er at the time of Reformation, the church decided, uh, they, they found out that many of the practices in the Middle Ages, especially at the end of the Middle Ages, when people, when the church uh, became corrupt and all they want is money, 
to re to build the, the the great cathedral into the more and more beautiful things. They hired the great artists like Michelangelo and so on, and and they painted the. Uh, uh, Sistine Chapel, and are they beautiful? Are they great art? Yes. Do they spend money? Yes. Where does money come from? Well, not only from tithe, but also from, well, uh, they got to promote something, so they push for the uh, indulgence. <laughs> and they're saying, if you donate money, you can redeem your dead, non-believing ancestors and relatives from purgatory. Well, most people love their uh, beloved ones, even though they're non-believers, and so if I can redeem them, great, and uh, uh, people start donating. But are those biblical principles? No. And th do those things ha uh, help us to have a uh, true, genuine spiritual life? No, because, you know, if I can still be redeemed after I'm dead, I don't have an urgency. I don't really need to believe now, neither do I need to spread the gospel, right? It doesn't matter. It really de depends on how much money you donate. Uh, so, uh, those are not biblical and uh, not true, and nor helpful, nor good. Neither true nor good. So, the, uh, because of those corruptions, uh, Martin Luther was the head, uh, uh, well, the kind of spearhead of the Reformation. He saw the the, the wrongs in the indulgence, and against that practice alone, he wrote so-called the 95 Thesis, and he, he, he nailed it on uh, a door of a church, uh, and uh, uh, that day was uh, counted as the beginning of the Reformation. And he was not thinking of splitting the church. Nobody wants to split the church. Okay? He just wants to reform the church, to make it go back to the Bible, to the truth. And he just saw that it was so corrupt. You know, everything is so beautiful, but the people were so corrupt. They have no love and no truth in them. He just wanted to reform it. And what did the, the people in power do to him? They, <laughs> they tried to uh, persuade, persuade him first, and then to exile him, and then kill him. Uh, well, that's what power and money does to people. Okay? When people who got it don't want to give it up, they, they don't have the gov governance by the Spirit and the truth, uh, they will do anything to keep their truth, in even including evil. And that's what the later medieval Catholic Church became. That's why the Reformation was necessary. The Reformation was not meant for splitting the Church. It was the refusal of reform by the Catholic Church that caused the split of the Church. The Reformation uh, spread like a fire, and uh, because God also made the situation uh, ready, you know, and uh, the nation states already arise uh, like uh, friends, and also uh, Germany at that time was a really an Holy Roman Empire with many small local principalities. Therefore, the local prince can determine which religion they go to and protect the people who. Who, who, who are there not to be killed by the Catholic army. So those situations caused the, uh, the Reformation to, to become reality. And uh, those are, are good things. However, we have to realize the early modern church, the Reformation, was done by a few good people who uh, caught on the truth, especially on the, the, the few uh, lost essential Bible doctrines like salvation by faith alone, uh, grace alone, and Christ alone. Authority is by the Bible alone, and the glory to the God, to God alone. Those are five alones are the uh, called the, the sola, the five solas of the Reformation, uh, and they are uh, precious, important doctrines for uh, all true Christians today, uh, and all Protestants especially should stick to them. Sola fide. Faith alone, sola gratiae, uh, grace alone, uh, sola Christos, gra uh, Christ alone, uh, sola uh, scriptura, the Bible alone, scripture alone, and the gloria dei, sola gloria dei, the grace of God alone. And uh, those are great principles, and the reason they, they, they called to it was because, uh, well, Martin Luther began to read the Romans in Greek. And he understood the, the, the essential. So going back to the original language was really important part. And uh, uh, therefore, from that time, the, the early modern church, it, it uh, started to go back to the truth, but it took a process. The early Reformation, uh, the people who are declared as Protestant 
really is because they lived in the place where the prince believed in uh, Lutheranism. <laughs> and uh, do the people who belong to the Lutheran church necessarily born again Christians? No. Just like they, those who are in Catholic church do not, uh, you know, ne are not necessarily born again. Uh, so they may be, may be more, but it's not guaranteed. So the, the seek, the search for internal uh, uh, born again uh, e experience, that came later. But the early uh, modern church, it goes back to the truth, to the Bible. Which Bible we stick to? Okay, do we stick to the Latin Bible, which is a translation of the of the uh, of the original Bible, but with some errors, or do we go back to the original language? So, from the Reformation, the truth, a teach, learning, and teaching the truth was a central mission, uh, and um, it, uh, it 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 started the missions movement to the world. And the first mission is to teach people to know the Bible. And the idea of public education actually it started from the early, uh, early uh, ref Reformed Church. And uh, how do we let people know the truth? You know, the, er uh, the medieval Catholic Church, they uh, let the clergy uh, have the monopoly uh, of reading and interpreting the Bible. And the people, the regular commoners, uh, they are not supposed to read the Bible. If they read it, if they own it, they are to be killed. You know, and if you never read the Bible, how do you know what God says? Okay, and uh, you don't. And uh, therefore, whatever the clergy tells you, uh, that is. And what would the clergy tell you? Well, certainly something that will enhance their power and position. <laughs> and what if that is a corrupted system? Will they continue to say it? Uh, that the Bible supported it? Yeah, they will say it. But how do you know? You can't tell, right? See, the only way for us to, to have a reformation back to the truth, and yeah, it's change, but change to what? Change to truth and to goodness, change to the scripture, and change to the model of society that, that, the, Bi that the Bible dictates, okay? Not just change for change's sake, as somebody today would say, okay? And in order for that change to be real, you have to let everybody learn to read and write, and you have to translate the Bible into the vernacular language. See, you go back to the original Bible, so the best of the scholars will go that uh, to understand it and interpret it correctly, and then they will translate the Bible into the vernacular languages, the, the heart tongue uh, of people. So the common people can read it, you know. and. Uh, in the Middle Ages, it's all Latin. It's called the Vulgate. Actually, Vulgate, which really means Vulgate. Uh, you mean vulgar. <laughs> Where the word vulgar? It's popular. Okay. It, it means uh, in the beginning, the, the, the Latin Bible was translated in a popular spoken form of Latin. It's meant for the common people to understand. But gradually later, you know, most people don't read Latin. So, at, from the time of Reformation, Luther was the first one who translated the Bible into the German. Okay, and the Luther's Bible is still used today in Germany. Uh, and then at that time, some uh, English people start to translate into English Bible. There have been several versions. Uh, you know, Wycliffe um, did some translation and uh, um, and uh, go to several steps, and, and finally it uh, ended into the King James version. It was authorized uh, and. Uh, from then on, the English Bible had its fixed form for over 400 years until now the language have changed, so we need to have a new translation. Uh, overall, the, the search for truth, and the tr especially the truth from God, it uh, necessarily made the early um, modern church as a school of God. Okay? And not only it made the church a school of God, it spread the idea into the society. Okay. Public education, that the princes, the rulers, have a duty of teaching their people, letting the, uh, them know how to read and write, so they can read uh, the Bible and they know what's right and wrong, and that is good for the society. So that idea was um, ingrained into the mind of the Protestants. That's why the Protestant societies from uh, the time of 16th centuries have a marked difference from the Catholic dominant societies. You can see the Industrial Revolution 
and uh, the the rise to empire uh, status. And uh, who who got it? Well, it's Britain, <laughs> Germany, and uh, those um, the the. Uh, uh, and then the America was part of the British Empire and so on. And, and the, I uh, grew up from China. And when I went back to China, China have two territories. And now I went back to China. But they used to be uh, governed by uh, two cultures. One w was Hong Kong. It became a colony of uh, Britain for over 100 years. Okay? And, uh, and the other is Macau. It became a colony of, uh, of Portugal for over 100 years. And uh, uh, therefore, th their society reflect these two cultures. One is uh, uh, Catholic, Macau. One is uh, Protestant, uh, in Hong Kong. And when I visit these two places, I can see the different spirits. You know, the, the, the Catholic spirits dominated society in Macau is laid back, it's uh, authoritarian, and it's, uh, it's not so active economically. And the biggest um, a money-making um, machine uh, there, business there, is gambling. And uh, the other, Hong Kong, was vibrant, it was lively, it was fast-paced, and everybody was uh, kind of, a, you know, busy in doing something, and they seemed to have a purpose. And that's a, the, the British American, uh, you know, the, the Protestant culture. And if you compare North America and South America, it also have a difference. Okay, the North America, uh, Canada, and uh, I mean, I mean, yeah, North America means Canada and and USA. Uh, it's a Catholic culture. Uh, Latin America, that's South America, including um, Mexico and Middle America. Latin America is Catholic culture, and you can see these two are very different. Uh, there are some cultural things that that have no good or bad. Okay, I love Mexican Mexican food as well as American food, but that's n nothing. But um, there is a mentality of the worldview and the view of society and the scripture and, and uh, the family, and that makes a big difference. So you can see which of these society is more economically developed, <laughs> which one is more ruled by law, and war, which one is more ruled by just kinship. Okay? And one is more advanced than the other. I would say the one ruled by law is more advanced culture. And that uh, causes society to, to grow and to, to progress. And so we can see that knowing the truth, uh, let people know the biblical truth and apply it to their uh, family life and to the society. It is good for the state. It's good for the nation. It's good for the nation to be strong. Uh, to, to become stronger and more prosperous. And those things are essential. And if we depart that, if you know, the, the idea of pub public education has become a, kind of a, a, a law now, it's ingrained in, in, in the secular state. However, the original purpose was lost. It, public education let people know how to read and write, now becomes just to train the workforce and not to know the Bible. And that has to be restored for us to be blessed. And may God bless us to keep being a truth uh, seeker. Amen.